how sweet the sound. 我醉。Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Don't wait another day. Welcome to Rye Lane Chapel. Thank you for joining us this morning as we come to worship God, to thank Him for holding us and sustaining us through these、um, months of lockdown. And today is a significant day because today our church building doors are open. Wonderful. Um, it's good to know that we have church family members in the building who are worshiping with us, and even some visitors. Welcome! Thank you for joining us today. Alongside us, who are worshiping remotely in our homes, we join you as we come together to worship God and to put Him 
in his rightful place. I'm aware that over the last three months or so, the word unprecedented has been said many times, and um, rightly so, actually. But across the world, it is unprecedented that places of worship, churches have been ordered to close. But what is also interesting is that in England, it's not unprecedented because 800 years ago, King John in 12,008 had a dispute with Pope Innocent III over who would be the next Archbishop. And their dispute led to the Pope, who had greater authority, to make an edict to say churches must close. And they closed for six years. Six years. I hope they know, as we know, that the building is not the church. The church doors were closed but church was not closed. We are the church. We are the ones who carry the good news of the gospel and we bring that hope to our families, to our communities, to wherever God placed us. There's a quote and it says, God is not calling us to go to church. God is calling us to be church and to bring his hope into the world. We are the church. When Jesus spoke to his disciple Peter, he said these words in Matthew chapter 16. He says, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overcome it. That's the words of Jesus. He has kept to his word. He continues to build us, his church, and the forces of evil will not overcome it. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. God will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen to that. Today we have a visiting speaker, um, someone who's known to a lot of us. It's Pastor Frank. He's come back to um, bring God's word. So we say thank you, Frank, for coming. Thank you for um, the word that you're going to bring. And we look forward to what God has laid on your heart and to what you bring to us today. Thanks also to Thea for editing these videos so that we have a nice smooth transition from one section to the next. I know it takes time and energy, it is a labour of love and we so appreciate that. Thank you and Thea, happy birthday to you. Yes, it's Thea's birthday today. At the end of the service, we will be sharing communion. For those of you in the building, um, one of the leaders will be leading communion for you um, and for those of us at home I will be leading communion um, and so if you'd like to join me in breaking bread and taking the cup please um, get some bread ready and get some wine or some juice and we can do that together. I'm going to pray. Pray that the God of heaven who's been so faithful that he will join us, he will meet us and be true to his word. His word says that as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us and I believe that as we draw near wherever we are today, God will draw near to you. So let's pray. Father God of heaven, we say thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the significance of today. That church buildings up and down this nation, the doors are open for people to come in and hear the good news of the gospel. May we, your church, be faithful 
to that good news of the gospel. And Father, I pray that we will come into your presence, that you will open our ears to hear what your spirit is saying, to open our eyes so we can see you in the faces of those around us. We love you and we want to honour you. Accept our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you are worthy Lord thank you for who you are thank you Lord that you're always there thank you Lord that my name is inscribed in the palm of your hand when everybody else is gone you are still there only you know the pain of our hearts the longing of our hearts and only you can satisfy that. Only you are so worthy of our praise. And so we're here to praise you, Lord. Maybe we can't sing, but we can praise you with all that we have inside of us. We can praise you with our tears. We can praise you with our arms lifted high. We can clap for you, Lord. We can wave our hands to you, the Alpha and the Omega. And so we praise you, Lord. And we welcome you into this place. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song. To him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah, with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Let's sing it on our strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. I will adore you. Filled with wonder.
wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery, yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I adore you I will adore you Worthy 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 Draw me close to you Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire And no one else will do Nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find a way Bring me back to you Embrace. 
help me find a way bring me back to you
step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me king of all days Oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Well, good morning to all those who are listening today at Rylane. It's good to be back after such a long time. Our morning meditation comes from a psalm which I have looked at over the years and which in some ways this psalm has carried me a lot. It's Psalm 20, a psalm of David. Let me just read it to you. May the Lord answer you when you're in distress or trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power 
of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. What a wonderful psalm of nine verses, and this will form our meditation as I speak to you of an assured future. And the reason why I've chosen this is that, as you know, yesterday we came out of lockdown, and there are many, many uncertainties ahead, many questions, a sense of unease for many, panic for others. For some, it's just, I don't know what the future holds. But this psalm helps us to understand that with God, there is an assured future. I've broken the psalm up into four points, which I think will help us as we explore it. And I'll just read the points to you. First of all, the first thing I want to tell you is life is no bed of roses. That is verse one. Secondly, God is on call, which is verse two. Thirdly, God will never forget us. That's verses three to five. And then verses six to eight is God knows the outcome. And then we wrap it together with a grace corner. So let's be begin the journey. And the journey begins with, first of all, life is no better roses. What I'm saying is in a real way, even after lockdown, life will have its troubles and its distress. But please note what the psalmist begins. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. The focus of a psalm sometimes is usually summed up in the opening words. And in this psalm, it's going to be what the Lord is going to do. His ability to act, his ability to answer us throughout the journey of our lives. The eternal truth about our Lord is that he is a prayer answering God. And it's for us to know that if you let your eyes sweep through verses 1, 6, and 8, you notice that the word answer appears in this short psalm three times. And how well we remember the words of Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. David was the further remark, I called on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. Note that he said. May the Lord answer you when. When tells us that it's going to happen. Trouble and distress, trials and tribulations are all part of our earthly journey. It's not if, it is definitely the reality. But remember what he says in Isaiah 65. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Please note carefully what he says. Not only will he answer you in the time of your trouble and distress, but he calls an example. May the name of, the, of God of Jacob protect you. But why is Jacob highlighted? Well, we know Jacob. Jacob's life was marked with trouble. He was born into a home with a father and mother who had their own issues. Then he became um, the mother's favorite, and then he, he was, as it were, a mother's favorite in the kitchen. And so, literally, he ran from the fire when he had to escape from his brother. And where did he end up? Into the frying pan. The frying pan's name, the model was Laban. And what Laban did was just amazing. Laban worked him, denied him of his, his pleasure. He worked for a woman he didn't love, and yet he had to wait further. And then after that, he worked him. Some nights, no sleep. He, he, he changed his, his um, salary many, many times. This was his trouble. But through it all, God was with him. So we can look to the Lord that in the midst of trouble, like Jacob, he will answer us. And the name of the Lord will protect us. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Never forget that. You remember I used to stress that a lot. The righteous run into it and are safe. But secondly, let's go on to the second point. The second point is that 
Although there is trouble, God is on call. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Isn't this a fact that many of us sometimes believe we are self-sufficient? We love to give the impression of who we are, what we have accomplished, the money we have, our family and finances, our education, all is because of us. But we fool ourselves. And COVID-19 is a stark reminder that unless the Lord has been our help, we would have all been gone. So help from the sanctuary simply rem reminds us of Psalm 46.1. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, a time of need. Psalm 124 verse 8 reminds us, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. When it speaks about sanctuary, it speaks about God's presence. It speaks about where God dwells and what he does. And we need to remind ourselves that God is there from his sanctuary, granting us help and support. As he looks over us today, he spots you. He calls you by your name. And he calls you, maybe it's Joe, maybe it's Janet, maybe it's Gabby, maybe it's Barry, maybe it's Phyllis, maybe it's Ian, maybe it's Tia. Look, if you're in trouble, remember I'm there to support you. Because God is the one who does it, and he does it very, very well. So this God is on call, and that is something we need to remember, that he will grant us help and support from Zion. One of the helps he gives us is peace. And one of the things we can do through this time, he's promised in Isaiah 26, 3, you will be kept in perfect peace if your mind is stayed upon God. So focus on God, that God is on call. You know, sometimes I, when I used to be dumb at Rylan, I served as an honorary chaplain at the hospital and some nights I would be in call. And it, it meant that if there was an emergency, they can call me and I would go up to the hospital and help. Phyllis can tell you more about that. And sometimes we forget that God is always on call. And whereas sometimes I would wish the night would pass and no one would call so I can sleep. God is not like that. He never slumbers nor he never sleeps. And that's important for us to know. So therefore, first of all, life is no better roses. There will be trouble and trials throughout the journey, the days ahead. But God is on call. But the third thing we need to remember is God will never forget us. Listen carefully to verse 3. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept all your burnt offerings. God is intricately involved in our daily journeys. He notices all that is going on because he is the all-seeing and all-knowing God. He will remember all that you and I are going through, what we have sacrificed. You're never, never forgotten by a great and loving God. Listen to Isaiah as he spoke these words. Can a mother forget, forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Whatever the sacrifices you have made to remain faithful and true to God, to your calling, to live a holy and godly life, to take a stand for truth and live a life of integrity, to go the extra mile, and we can go on to help someone who needed support through these days. God will never forget you. God is no man's debtor. Listen again to the words of Romans 11, 35 and 36. Who is ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him, and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. And at the end of this verse 3, we come to this word, sila, which literally means stop, pause, and consider. 
And that's what we're supposed to do. But note carefully, he also adds, as he closes that, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. God is a big giver. And in every way, he is liberal and loves to pour out his abundant blessings. God's style is to be generous, to be benevolent and lavish. He's not stingy. He's not mean and tight-fisted. In this regard, he loves to give us the desire of our hearts. But too many of us take this to mean whatever we want. But it's best to change it to whatever we need. Did not Paul declare in Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. So both the desire of our hearts and the success of our plans must, my brothers and sisters, be fueled by one aim, and the aim is to bring glory to God. Psalm 37, 23 reminds us the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. I think one of the best illustrations of that is the life of Joseph. His steps were ordered and God granted him the desires of his heart. And so if, we, if the Lord acts on our behalf, as we head into the future, then the outcome is a given. And the response to the outcome is their shouts of joys, banner waving in the name of the Lord. You may say, well, what is a banner? A banner, by the way, is more than a piece of cloth flying from a pole. It bears, a, it bears various emblems symbolizing battles fought and victories won. Here's a question. Is the flag of your life or my life filled with patches from the perilous moments of our past? May I encourage you, those we would be remind us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. For I can guarantee that if you do this, if we do this, we will have a splendid banner to wave. Timothy is called upon in 1 Timothy 6.12 to fight the good fight of faith, take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses. So continue through the days ahead and God has assured you that despite the fact that life is not a bed of roses, he is on call. He will not forget us. And now we come to the fourth point. Because he is God, God knows the outcome. Look at verses 6 through 9. It's a beautiful closing. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers. And then he, there's this clear re remark. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Please note that the certainty and confidence of David is in the ability of the Lord God to deliver and to assure that the victory is secured. So we have the words, give, answers, victorious power by his right hand. God has intervened from his heavenly sanctuary. God has won the victory as he does, and he wants us to see happen in our lives. And this is because of a simple and eternal truth, that victory can only be won through the name of the Lord. I remember when I was growing up, we used to sing a song, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. When we stand on the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have the victory. And that is what I want to encourage you. In many battles, David's weapons and military machinery were no match for the enemy. But with God's help, he captured, 
chariots and horses because why? His trust was in the name of the Lord. And at this time of ease and lockdown, you may think that you can make it alone. Brothers and sisters, don't try that. But may I beseech you, do not overestimate the wiles of the enemy of our, uh, against our souls, but do not underestimate the strength and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is victorious. And let me close now by giving you this simple final verse. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Our lives are intertwined with the king. And this king can be no other than the risen Christ who is ascended at the Father's right hand and ever lives to make intercession for us. Let's pray. Lord, help us as your people to find victory. In Jesus' name, amen. They went, the morning sun was dead, the savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon him. was laid in darkness, a battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken, the ground began to shake.
sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb
we now have an opportunity to share communion together. Whether you are in the building at Rye Lane Chapel or whether you're at home, it's good that we can come together as the body of Christ and break bread. If you are at home, I hope you have some bread and some juice or some wine so that we can all join in together. As we come, we set aside our wisdom, our will and our words. We empty our hearts and we bring nothing in our hands. Lord, we long for your healing. We long for your holding, to know more of your forgiveness, which Christ alone can offer. Father, as we come to this table, meet us, we pray. We come to give thanks. We come to remember. And as we remember, Deepen our love and strengthen our faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Lord's table is a place of proclamation. Here we proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Lord and that it is He who spiritually feeds us. So when we are spiritually hungry, it is he that we run to. Here we proclaim the unity we have in Christ. The unity we have in forgiveness of sins, our unifying prayers and unity around this table. This table which God welcomes us to as we remember him. Unity of thanks. Thanking God for his son, Jesus. So as we come, I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians, where the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and instructed them regarding their worship around the Lord's table. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. It was Passover and Jesus was with his disciples in the room and they broke bread, they had Passover and Jesus took the bread. He gave mm -hmm. thanks for the bread. He broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Let us break bread together. Let us take and eat in remembrance of Christ Jesus. Father God, thank you for your body broken. Thank you for the cross that powerful cross of Jesus, the cross where sins are forgiven, the cross where all are accepted, the cross where you took our punishment upon yourself. As we eat this bread, we say thank you. Thank you. Let's eat the bread together.
Father God, it is with thankful hearts that we praise you. We praise you for the love that pursued us and the forgiving grace that you pour over us. We thank you because what was done in Christ Jesus is truly amazing. As we remember his sacrifice, the sacrifice that he made on our behalf, we say thank you. Not only did Jesus step into human flesh, which we share, but he experienced the power of temptation, which we face, and he accepted the penalty which is due to us. He was nailed to a cross which we deserved. He died that we might know eternal life and that what we might never be separated from you. Thank you for the cross. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. This is a cup of forgiveness. It reminds us of the blood of Jesus which was shed so that we could stand before our holy God righteous because of the cross. Let's drink with thankful hearts. As we stand at the foot of the cross, let's bring to the God of heaven those we love, family and friends, and we would love for God to meet with them, for them to reach out to him. So let's pray on their behalf. Father, we pray for family and friends. For those who are physically unwell, we pray that you will extend your hand and touch them and bring healing. For those who are emotionally broken, for those who are grieving, we pray that you will comfort them and bind up their broken hearts. For those who are looking for a path in life, we pray that you will be their guide. You will be a light and a lamp unto their path. And for those who are seeking life and meaning, may they turn their hearts and their minds towards you. And that know that you are the giver of life. And Father God, for ourselves, we pray this prayer together. From where we are to where you need us, Lord, lead us on. From the security of what we know, to the adventures that will be revealed, Lord, lead us on. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles something of your kingdom, Lord, lead us on. Lead us on, we pray. 
to be imitators of Christ in the community in which your place is. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's end by saying the grace together and for each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Amen.
Yeah.